Okay, so color theory 101. Um, something that I don't know, I mentioned it in past videos, but I haven't shared is I actually have a degree in graphic design. And part of that degree was learning about color theory. And I think a lot of artists just starting off are there for the for like the passion of it and they just sort of go via intuition and most art is done via intuition. However, if you ever go to get an art degree, um, mine was in graphic design, like I said, one of the first things they teach you is color theory. And um, I filmed me painting this color wheel. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> and I only used three colors to make all of this, um, or four, <laughs> pardon me, three colors and white. Um, white is technically not a color, it's a shade. Um, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> so I started off with that red, that yellow, and that blue. And those are called the primary colors. Um, they exist at their core nature. Um, so just as far as colors go, your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Now you can see I have a red here, I have yellow here, and blue here. And when you mix red and blue, everyone knows you get purple. <laughs> when you mix blue and yellow, you get green, yellow, and red make orange. So orange, purple, and green are called your secondary colors. So you have primary and you have secondary colors. There are also tertiary colors, so third. So what happens when you mix red and orange is you get red orange or orange red <laughs> depending what you want when you mix um, the orange and uh, yellow you get sort of yellow orange in there so there's different shades in between um, there's blue purple there's green blue blue green or turquoise we call it turquoise a lot um, there are a lot of different names for the tertiary colors lots of different ways to combine them now if you add in a shade like white that's when you get more of the pastel colors. You can do the same with black. That being said, black doesn't necessarily exist within nature on its own. Beetles are black, but they tend to be iridescent. Uh, cats can have black fur, but really underneath it, it's a very deep brown. Um, so another thing I did on here is I mixed uh, browns using the opposites on the color wheel. So the color wheel exists on its own. You can see it in nature uh, in the form of a rainbow, uh, for instance, and that is the visible light spectrum. There are different colors that exist that our eyes don't pick up. You can see that in like infrared or uh, night vision goggles or things like that. Other shades and colors exist, but for Color Theory 101, we're just gonna talk about the visible light spectrum. I can go further into it and talk about um, different colors based on like digital prints, uh, you know, the light spectrum versus what we see with our own eyes and all of that. And there's different names for those colors that create the color combinations. But maybe I will do a color uh, theory 102 and get more into that. However, I just wanted to show you the shades of brown you can make using just three colors. So again, I used uh, yellow and blue to make this green. And when you mix it with red, you get this lovely, hang on, it'll focus. There we go. Eh, kind of. Anyway, you get a lovely uh, warm brown. If you mix purple and yellow, I did a little too much purple in there. You can still see it, but purple and yellow make, um, almost like a honey colored brown, depending on how much yellow you add in. And then blue and orange make sort of that, um, <laughs> it's almost a greenish brown uh, if you look closely, uh, but it's more of a true brown. So anyway, you don't need brown paint to make brown. All you need is three basic uh, primary colors and it can be any shade of primary color. Um, to create all of that. So again, the colors I use to create every color on this page is that red, that bright yellow, and that medium blue. Um, so 
So I wanted to show you guys that. The other thing I wanted to show you for Color Theory 101 is there are warm colors and cool colors. So the warm colors are red all the way through to yellow. Cool colors are purple all the way through to green. And that is the color wheel. There are other color combinations based on the color wheel that are classics um, that every artist uses. And um, the first would be analogous colors. So that would be colors that are neighbors on the color wheel. So red, orange, and yellow are analogous. Uh, green and blues are analogous. You could even add a purple there and it would still be considered analogous because they're neighbors on the color wheel. So purple, red, and pink analogous. Yellow, green, and blue analogous, which is really great. Um, then there are complementary colors. Complementary means they are across from each other on the color wheel. Um, you would use complementary colors in something that you want to pop, like make it really bright and beautiful. Complementary colors are often used in art that, uh, I don't know, it was a trend that went around and it's probably still quite popular, but um, a lot of painters and digital painters especially made kind of like neon landscapes. Uh, like, I don't know, the one I'm thinking of particularly, maybe I can insert it, I'll have to see how to do that. But um, it is, like a neon Tokyo landscape and they use complementary colors like this sort of neon turquoise blue and this neon magenta e pink. So kind of like this color palette here that are complementary colors. Christmas colors, red and green complementary colors. Um, these are like you know, orange and blue are complementary. Purples and yellows and oranges, complementary. They're across the street from each other on the color wheel. And then there's another color combination. Actually, there's two more, um, but I'm only gonna touch on one more and they're called triadic. And basically all triadic means is you would draw a triangle anywhere on the color wheel. So say I started red, yellow and blue. The primary colors are triadic. The secondary colors are triadic and the tertiary, tertiary colors are also triadic. So some examples right here, red, yellow, and blue, the primaries, but you can even go a little more pastel with it. Pink and a peach and a light blue, triadic. Um, you know, a magenta, dark green and a orange are triadic. Purple, green and a bright orange, triadic. So anyway, I just wanna show you that. And the last thing I wanna show you is shade and tint make the tone. So the color that something is, is the hue. The hue right here, this hue is orangish. However, the shade as you get closer to the white is lighter, it's a lighter shade or a darker shade. So when you're talking about a hue, you're talking about the true color it is. When you're talking about the shade, you're talking about how dark it is. When you're talking about the tint, you're talking about how light it is, how much white is mixed in. Shade is how much black is mixed in. And you can talk about tone, which is a more general term, how gray a color is. So when you're painting and deciding on your colors and you're mixing them up and you say, Hmm, I know I want a green hue, but I would like it to have a bit more shade. So you'll mix in a little bit more black. Um, in my case, I don't always go for black. Like I said, I'll go for a darker brown, maybe a little bit of purple to liven it up a little bit. Um, black tends to just take over everything. So, um, but that's up to you if you're the artist. I just wanted to show you a little bit of Color Theory 101. So a quick review. The color wheel is made by three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. The secondary colors are green, purple, and orange, and you get those by mixing the primary colors. There are also tertiary colors as you mix the secondary and the primary colors, and literally thousands upon thousands of shades of colors. To make brown, you mix the complementary colors or the ones that are opposite from each other on the color wheel to make any shade of brown. That was a really loud car. <laughs> anyway, um, to make any shade of brown that you want. Color stories, there's analogous and they are neighbors on the color wheel. 
There is complementary and they are across from each other on the color wheel. There is also triadic, which means you would draw a triangle on the color wheel and that would be your color story. If you want to make something darker, you talk about the shade. If you want it to be lighter, you talk about tint. And if it's somewhere in between, you can never go wrong with the word tone. Um, there is a fourth type of color combination that a lot of color theorists talk about, and those are colors that occur in nature. Um, I will also insert a picture that suggests this. Um, one that comes to mind is like a close-up of a blooming cactus. Uh, there's like this bright purple and then green and yellow. And they're not necessarily triadic or complementary. All I'm saying is when you have something in nature, it doesn't always follow color theory rules because nature just does what it does. And um, if you find it striking and beautiful, then it is striking and beautiful and it's a perfect color story to choose. So there are no rules in color, but this is just the, I guess, scientific theory behind color. Let me know down in the comments if you would like a Color Theory 102 that talks about um, the practical uses of color theory, whether it's in print or in digital displays. Um, there are different color combinations. So there's like CMYK and there is RGB. <laughs> and um, so they're for different um, execution. So it's like CMYK is for print. And if you are designing digitally and you need to print, then you need to know about that. If you are designing digitally and you want to put it online, then RGB is going to be your friend. Um, RGB has really taken off, especially with the invention of LEDs. And we could talk about that and the practical applications of that. If you're interested, it's all very uh, tedious and detailed but I do have a degree in it and I'm happy to share if you would like. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching Color Theory 101. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this and if you would like to learn a bit more. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Okay. Let me know down in the comments. Comment below if you guys are interested in a Color 102 where I talk about uh, things like CMYK, um, cyan, magenta is used for printing. RGB is used. <sighs> it's a busy day out here. Who knew Thursdays were so busy in the Redwoods?